Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Today is Monday, April 26, 2021. Um, it is 10 a.m. and I appreciate you joining us for, your, for our special call meeting this morning. Uh, Board of Commissioners, before we start, I certainly want to call a uh, roll and make sure that we are here to uh, make sure that we have an, a quorum. Uh, I'll start with District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Are you here? Present. District 2, uh, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Okay. I believe she's not here with us this morning. And Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, present. We have uh, four commissioners here, and we all are present and accounted for, and we have, I have verified that we do have a quorum. Uh, commissioners, thank you so much for being here. Uh, good morning again, Board of Commissioners, and to the citizens of Douglas County. We have a special business item this morning, and the business item is for the approval of the projects to C Congressman Scott's office for submission to the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure for consideration in the 2021 Surface Transportation Author Authorization Legislation and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. But before I call the question this morning, I want to allow our County Administrator Sharon Subedan to frame and discuss uh, what this subject matter is all about. And then before, certainly, and then of course, I will call the question when she uh, yield the floor back to me. And at this point, Sharon Subedan, you have the floor. Good morning, Good Chair morning. and Commissioners. Thank you for convening this special call meeting. Um, as you are aware, the Service Transportation Act is um, actively being considered and we received a request from our congressional legislative delegation to essentially put forward our projects that we are willing to support at the local level. Um, I am late to this party, but my understanding is these four projects have been discussed in the past. There is some minimal federal funding already in place for these projects. Um, it's a total of over 80 million in projects um, with a local support of 31 million. Um, that funding is not being requested at this time. These are long-term projects, but the purpose of this meeting today is to get your commitment that should we be successful, and I believe we will, in gaining the support for these projects through, through the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act, that as a commission, you will support and actively pursue our local match. And um, in doing so, we will be able to bring these needed transportation projects to our community. And so um, Miguel Gant Valentine is on the call. And I also have asked, um, Director Tiffany Stanley Stewart, Stewart Stanley, I'm sorry, <laughs> to wrap up for us. Um, any questions that you may have, we will be subject to. So at this time, I want to briefly turn it over to Miguel for a high level and quick summary, for, mostly for the public, because you all are very familiar with this. And then I'll ask um, Tiffany to close it out for us. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, good morning. These the the four projects that um, that we're looking to uh, have su local support for have been, uh, as it's been mentioned, discussed previously. Uh, they are all within within the comprehensive transportation plan uh, that the county adopted. Um, we would have been successful over the years in gaining a small amount of federal funding on them to begin the design process and in the case of two of them actually pre-design uh, one is in scoping and one in feasibility so the four projects are the regional trail system uh, from boundary waters to um, uh, sweetwater creek state park and that one is in the design phase. Uh, I, I do have a map, I'm, uh, if I can share my screen, it might be easier to Uh, 
unfortunately, I'm, I'm not able to pull that map up for some reason. <clears throat> but in any event, uh, uh, one of the projects is the trail system that's been underway for about a year and a half. The other projects are related to the phase one of Lee Road widening, which is from I-20 North to uh, Veterans Memorial Highway. That project was started uh, initially in, in pre-design back in the early, um, I'm guessing it was early 2000s or uh, 2005, six, that time frame. But it was shelved at that time in favor of um, the, the bridge project for, for uh, Lee Road and the Lee Road widening project. The, the Lee Road widening project is, is um, from uh, picking up where phase one leaves off at I-20 and it continues widening Lee Road down to State Route 92 Furburn Road. And that project is anticipated to go into construction early this summer. Uh, that project it is, is not one of the ones that we are uh, looking for, for funding on. It does have a fair amount of federal funding on it already. Uh, but it is um, used for reference in terms of explaining the continuity of the projects. So uh, <clears throat> we have phase one, which is 78 to I-20 essentially, phase two, which is from I-20 to Furburn Road, and then the Lee Road extension, uh, that goes south of Furburn Road, and it will connect to Beaumont Road and eventually to Chapel Hill. Uh, that project is also in in the feasibility study now. Uh, it's sort of segmented into into two segments, one going from 92 down to Bomar and potentially to Pope um, Road, and then segment two from Pope Road over to uh, Chapel Hill. And uh, the fourth project is what is uh, has been known as the Chapel Hill Road I-20 DDI uh, uh, scoping study. Uh, it initially was uh, couched and intended to look at the possibility of a DDI at that loc uh, a diverging diamond interchange at that location. And but as we got into it, it turns out that that was not necessarily the best solution for that location. So that project is also uh, in in the scoping feasibility phase now we are about wrapping that up we anticipate to have a concept report approved on that project in the next couple of months and so we would be ready to move these projects forward and this would be uh, this funding opportunity has come up and so we we present them for your consideration uh, for potential allocation of future funding to, to the projects. Now, if we were to be able to move the project um, based on the current schedule, then there would be uh, perhaps uh, some phases of design that could be advanced in uh, starting perhaps even later this year in 2022. But beyond that, most of the effort is starting in 2023 through 2026 based on the schedules uh, and vision for the projects. So um, that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain those after um, I guess Tiffany would perhaps add um, some additional information regarding to the funding uh, opportunity itself. Thank you, Miguel. Good morning, Board of Commissioners, County Administrator Subedan. Um, so what what is the basis of this information is for um, Congressman Scott's office. Uh, Congress has returned to something called community funding project or projects or member designating funding, which was previously referred to as earmarks. And so what the uh, chairman of the Appropriations Committee for the U.S. House has determined is that she feels that the U.S. congressmen are in a better position to determine what projects are being funded in their communities because they're representatives of their community. And so Congressman Scott's office is looking for projects. Uh, we have been working diligently with his state office and his federal office, I'm mean, his office in D.C., I'm sorry, to make sure that they have the information that Douglas County, about Douglas County's proposed projects. Um, and so they will be looking at all of the projects, ranking the projects, 
and um, submitting those projects to the committee for um, acceptance. Um, each congressman is expected to be able to direct about anywhere between 15 and $20 million in funds to their communities in guaranteed funds, but the, the congressman himself will be looking at the projects and picking which projects that he would like to move forward. So that's just the basis of the, the request for today. Tiffany, could you also weigh in on the other, um, on the other, the, the senator offices, please? Yes. And so the U.S. Senate has not come up with their um, with their process for earmarks or community project funding. However, we are submitting to each senator's office the same information that we're submitting to Congressman Scott's office for appropriations through their appropriations funding request to make sure that we have a, just a consistent strategy to make sure that we know, let all of our federal representatives know that these are the projects that we are pushing um, transportation-wise in Douglas County. Thank you. Madam Chair, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. I had a conversation by myself. Are you all, thank you for the presentation. Do you have anything else that need to come before the board uh, in terms of framing what we're planning to vote on at this moment? Not at this time, we're subject to your questions. All right, thank you. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have any questions for uh, our county administrator, Super Dan, or our, 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 her staff at this time? Okay. C Commissioner Robinson, are you? You're muted as well. You're muted. Mm -hmm. Can you see yeah. me? Yeah, can I can see you. Now. Yeah, you, you have the floor, Vice Chairman Robinson. All right, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you for convening um, this uh, meeting this morning, which is a voted meeting. My question then becomes, um, uh, County Administrator, you talked about it, or at least I heard um, a a timeline uh, basically from 2023 to 2026, as far as activity, you know, in other words, um, hammers to nails, um, um, plows to the field, 2020. You know, so that this is long term. This is a long term. Now I'm framing my, in my own mind the decision I'm going to make. In other words, this this is going to live beyond the moment. This is about the future um, of the county and obviously the projects that it it directly impacts. Right. So it's somewhat of a for me. It, it's 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 a. It has to be thoughtful. It has to be meaningful. It has to be part of um, a better tomorrow. And so we're asking, I'm going to go back to the original ask, which is that we're committing to pursue, listen to my words, committing to pursue a long term capital funding um, that will basically, we will be responsible for putting up roughly about, what, 35, 36 million um, to, to fulfill an $86 million ask. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. That is correct. And based on last week's um, um, voting matter, um, there was an expectation and condition put forth that the administration would help come up with the various options that would be associated almost in parallel. It looks like we were aligned in sync on how, um, how we pursue that. Um, so you've got a grant option. Now, I'm not certain that we have 30 million cash in the bank. So I need to I need to be specific. I don't like to do the public like this. So you'll learn this. So I mean, are you going to work on a plan? So we're committing without a com with, without the plan in hand, but we're committing to pursue. Listen to the language. We're committing to pursue because we got a deadline today. You got a perishable moment of opportunity, and so we're committing to say as a board of commissioners to say, hey, but now nah, nah. y'all get this right. And what is the impact that's going to have? I know you don't have the answer today. I know because it's coming from on high. It's that opportunity, a mandated opportunity. Like, okay, guys, I get it. But we still got to put it out there. So let me just yield the floor for a minute. I may come back with some additional questions, but I'm, I'm okay. Let me just hear from my peers. Madam Chair, I'm going to yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the board or call a question? Commissioner Carthen, I see you. 
face. I'm not sure if that's an indication. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My question mm -hmm. is to, to the staff. These projects that we are considering this morning um, for the resolution, is this strictly for transportation, strictly for roads and infrastructure and design? Is it strictly for that? The pro yes, under the uh, surface transportation reauthorization legislation, um, yes, it would fall within that category. There are some opportunities for community project funding, but in my discussions with Congressman Scott's office, it's their preference that we choose one track because they're only going to get so many projects. And they really, when when I discussed the projects with them, and I think Miguel did. They had they like said we like these projects, and this is you know this is kind of the way to go. But um, yes, there are other opportunities and there will be some more now that the community project funding or earmarks, as they were previously called, have returned where the congressman can designate what they want to see money to go to. And I think, um, you know, working with the county administrator to look at some long term ideas for some future projects would be wise for the county to do. OK, so that. I think that's good because we know in Douglas County, we do need to work on our infrastructure. It is part of our overall economic development, right? If we don't have the infrastructure in place, then we can't ask those big corporations and those entities that we really want to come into the county to come because how can we feed their ecosystem if our infrastructure isn't in place? Um, so one of my big things that I do keep hearing my constituents say is economic development. So in doing this, then this helps to, uh, to add to that. Um, and plus, you know, once we have nice roads and things, people have to travel somewhere, right? They have to go somewhere, right? You're on the road, but you got to go somewhere. So I would definitely ask that we look at um, overall funding so that we can attract those other businesses and also um, put in place um, quality of life things so that people can get on these nice roads and go somewhere nice in the county, preferably. So, uh, but that's my comment. But I'm excited to see that we had already been in the works and designing it and that um, possibly can get these dollars. So thank you for the work that uh, you and um, Miguel have done. And um, I yield the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Any other comments? Um, Do you have anything, yes, Commissioner? Okay, Commissioner yes. Mitchell, you have the floor. Yep, this one, maybe Miguel and or uh, Tiffany. Okay, are, are these projects listed as a group or prioritized as to possible funding or are we just basically you know because i know we need to be we're not financially uh ready for these projects but i think we're in a good space to be prepared when they do come down the pipeline that we're ready so miguel is this are this this is a group request to uh congressman scott or is this or am i missing something i'm just want to make sure i understand yes uh, uh commissioner the, the projects that we submit are individual projects. Um, so it is a package of four individual projects. It will be vetted by the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. They will make the determination as to which, if any, of the projects to fund. Uh, but we're not, at this time, they're not asking us to prioritize uh, our four projects in any way. Got it. So, so the committee will kind of come back, you know. But we just want to make sure we let Congressman Scott know that that we're definitely interested in these particular four projects, and if possible, federally, can you fund or submit, and we will do what percentage? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty percent, or we don't know that until we get to that bridge. We we will not know until the amount of funding is is uh, identified. It certainly can't be any higher than 80% federal and 20 local. That That is ideal and, and that would be our goal, but depending on project cost, um, it may end up being a different ratio lower than 80-20. Understood, good stuff. Well, okay, you, you've answered my questions and, and, I, and I appreciate you guys and great job on both guys' behalf of definitely keeping us in front of these guys and. I know we'll we'll deal with the 20% or whatever that match may end up being when we cross that bridge. But the infrastructure, as stated by Commissioner Carson, is a definite, uh, a must. So if we can improve on it, I think we need to be prepared and ready to kind of act on it. So you, you count me in on this one. I think this is a great move. So again, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. 
And certainly I'll just close by saying this is a great opportunity. Grant opportunities are always uh, favorable, uh, particularly to our county and our county needs. Just had one question for our county administrator. Uh, certainly as we dove, and I'm dovetailing off of the uh, vice chairman comment, we certainly don't have $30 million laying around, but just wanted to ask, uh, would it be a possibility for the recovery relief funding to be avail I mean, be available to leverage this moment or either a T-SPLOS or some other avenues in the future? If you could speak to those to help frame how we will get there to provide this 20, uh, uh, 30 percent uh, match that we need, if you could. Thank you, Madam Chair. Generally, they do not look favorably upon matching um, federal funds with other federal funds because they want local buy-in. And so, um, as Commissioner Robinson said, this is a commitment to pursue the capital. And um, as you noted in the agenda item, we said possible future SPLOST funding. Um, yes. Certainly, as we work on the future capital plan, um, consistent with the um, CTP, we will be looking at the funding opportunities to support the, the capital infrastructure plan. But generally, you have to be able to demonstrate a local commitment mm -hmm. that is separate from additional federal funding. Okay. Thank you. You responded to my answer. You said splossed, potentially t splossed, something of, of that magnitude related uh, other than the recovery relief. That makes sense. Okay, you answered my question, and I think this is a wonderful opportunity, uh, in my opinion. All right, uh, Board of Commissioners, any other questions? Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have yes. the floor. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify um, to the county administrator's point. Um, yes, we're, we're trying to leverage our, our, our local contribution um, against the federal. And, and to your point, no, you can't be highly leveraged with a, bu with a bunch of grant money, right? Um, we understand structure. Um, I'm going to go back to, again, so there's an alignment of our thoughts that it was always purposeful, which is when we ask for a long-term capital plan, that there will be options associated with that, whether it's a geo bond, t splossed mm -hmm. or SPLOST. We have had these conversations in the past. So we're looking for the administration to come back to us as a board and, and say, okay, if we were to pursue, pursue these, show me five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. What is in our best interest? Not political convenience. It's about the math. What is in the best interest of the county and is what we can bear, right? You got about $3 million in your, your sort of capital fund that we created for these moments, for this very moment that you can at least leverage some degree of, look, we got a down payment. That was the purpose of what we went through last year, is to restructure ourselves so that we can take advantage of opportunities, and it took discipline. So, Madam Administrator, I, I need you to be thoughtful when you come back and get thorough. Right now, I think we're looking just to submit the application uh, and get underway, but at the same point, um, it's very important that we, we, we show soundness in how we approach this. And so I just want to leave it at that, um, just to clarify, um, again, um, and just for the record, Commissioner Mitchell, when, uh, when Miguel talked about um, the, the, the sort of transportation infrastructure, that's beyond us, that's at a higher level, but I'm sure we will weigh in, that's a different committee, that was federal, not us, but nonetheless, um, I'm sure we will see it when it comes back through. That being said, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and yield the floor, Madam Chair, I think I've sufficiently clarified what we would need as a board. We need options. Please don't deal us our hand on how we're going to lean and look at this. We can make our own choices. So, County Administrator, I think you uh, understand and clarify. I know this is, you know, out the gate, and you already had already spoke to this, that we need to be prepared for opportunities like this, and so there it is. So, I, I think we're, we're aligned for the right moments. So, that being said, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Board of Commissioners, if we don't have any other comment, I'm certainly going to call the question at this moment. Um, we will uh, vote manually this morning uh, because a civic clerk, of course, I didn't uh, warn you in advance, so I respectfully, we will vote uh, manually. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve projects to Congress, Congressman Scott's office for submission to the Committee on Transportation 
and infrastructure for consideration in 2021 for the uh, service transportation authorization legislation and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. So moved. Second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion, board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your name and district, please uh, cast your votes accordingly. District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Yes. District 2, Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Yes. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Yes. Our District 4 Commissioner is not here today, and Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, yes. We have a 4-0 uh, vote, and the motion carries. And thank you so much uh, to our County Administrator and to, our, and to your staff for coming in and presenting this morning. So the motion did carry Board of Commissioners, and we look forward to great things coming down the pike uh, in terms of transportation for Douglas County in the very uh, near future. Uh, if, are there any other comments from the Board this morning? Okay, with that being said, I appreciate Madam, you. Madam Chair. Okay, Vice, I'm sorry. County Administrator, Sharon, uh, Sharon Duke, uh, Superdan, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, on a totally unrelated issue, but somewhat connected issue, I just got noticed that the census um, will be making an announcement at 3 p.m. today on, um, on the initial census results. So I know we've all been anxious and waiting to see how that comes out. Um, certainly impacts for everybody in Georgia, but um, in particular Douglas County. And so um, as soon as we have that link, we will send it to you so you can tune in to the press conference, which I believe is at three o'clock today um, from the Census Bureau. Very good. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, you have that information about this regarding the census. All right. Well, if there's nothing else to come before this board, I uh, appreciate your time and talent today. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much.